It's been two whole years since my last tablet review and I'm dying to see what the market has to offer digital artists in 2023. And I'm starting out strong with probably the most affordable pen display tablet I have reviewed to date. Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing the Vic Studio VK1200 pen display tablet. Now it's been about four years since I last reviewed a product from Reek and I'm pretty excited to see how far the brand has gone since then. And for full disclosure, Reek did send me this tablet for free in return for a review here on my channel. That means they're also sponsoring today's video. Now when I do reviews here on my channel, I always make sure that the brains are aware that I will be expressing my very own personal and honest opinions on the products that I'm reviewing, even if that's sometimes meaning giving a bit of criticism. If I'm not allowed to express my honest opinions, the video will not be uploaded in the first place. So thanks a lot to Vic for sending over the Studio VK1200. Let's take a looky, shall we? The Vic Studio VK1200 is a fully laminated drawing monitor with an 11.6 inch work area and 6 express keys. So it's a fairly small tablet, but its size is perfect to bring along with you if you're using a laptop. I'll get into the details later, for now let's start by checking out what's inside the box. Inside the box first you'll find a drawing glove that's included with the tablet. I am personally not a fan of drawing gloves in general, I apparently have extremely thin and long fingers, so I've never had a drawing glove that actually fit my hand. But if you use drawing gloves or would like to try one, you'll probably be happy to find one included in this box. You'll also get a dust cloth so you can wipe your screen clean before each use. Then there's the tablet itself of course, but before we return to this, let's take a quick look at the rest of the box's contents. You'll get two drawing styluses. This is not at all uncommon, but it still fathoms me to this day as to why. I don't know why I would need two styluses, but regardless, it is a really nice gesture. The stylus has a nice rubbery grip and I personally really like when brands shape their styluses like this with a thicker grip towards the end because it reduces strain on my hand. There are also two express keys on the stylus and the pen nib feels really firm, which I personally prefer over bouncy pen nibs. You'll also get this two-piece stylus holder for your desk. Inside it you'll find 8 additional pen nibs and at the bottom you'll find the little pen nib remover tool. The box also comes with an additional little bag of pen nibs so you should be good and set for a few years, depending on how hard you handle your stylus of course. Let's quickly take a look at the cables. The Studio VK1200 comes with the characteristic 3-in-1 USB cable solution so you can connect your tablet to your computer. The smaller USB-C plug goes into the tablet and the two bigger USB-A plugs go into your computer. These will provide function and power to your tablet. Then there's the HDMI cable. The regular sized HDMI goes into your computer and the micro HDMI plug goes into the tablet. This cable is what transfers the visuals from your computer down to your tablet. Last but not least you'll find the quick start guide which we'll use in a short minute as well as a driver download guide that reminds you to uninstall all previous tablet drivers on your computer before installing this one. On the quick start guide you can also see the system requirements in order to use this tablet with your computer. Now let's take a look at the tablet itself. I am generally very satisfied with the look and feel of the tablet. It feels sturdy but it also looks sleek at the same time. The feedback on express keys are very nice and if you look along the side of the tablet you'll find the ports for the cables along with the button to control the screen's brightness and the on off button. So now that you know the contents of the box, let's quickly talk about what is required from your computer in order to use the VK1200 from Vic with it. Like I mentioned, your computer will need to have at least one available USB-A port as well as one regular HDMI port. In case your computer cannot provide power enough through the black USB, you'll need either an additional USB-A port or a USB-A compatible phone adapter to power the tablet properly. If you look inside the quick start guide, you can also find a map of the setup as well as the order in which you should install the cables. Let's do that! Here's how you install the VK1200 tablet properly. First, plug the micro HDMI cable into your tablet. Then connect the other end of the cable with the regular HDMI into your computer. Don't turn anything on yet! Next, you take the USB-C plug and connect it to the tablet's USB-C slot. 
And lastly, connect the black USB-A plug into your computer. If the screen on the tablet is now flashing or not turning on by itself or after you push the on off button, you will need to also use the red USB plug. I just connected both of the USB plugs to my computer just to make sure I had enough power and the tablet turned on all by itself. This version of the tablet that I received did not come with a stand so I went and fetched my trusted IKEA tablet stand and it fits perfectly. Use the long two-sided button on the tablet side to adjust the screen's brightness. I had mine comfortably at 80%. Next step is to uninstall all tablet drivers you might already have on your computer, then navigate to vic.com and download the driver for this tablet. There's a note in the quick start guide for users with a certain Mac operating system, so be sure to follow these instructions if you're using this specific version. After installing any tablet driver, I always reboot my computer immediately. Now it's finally time to test the tablet and so far everything seems to be working perfectly. The first thing I always do with the pen display tablet is to open my Windows monitor properties and set the tablet to become my main monitor and place it underneath my other monitor. Also make sure that you're expanding your screens instead of duplicating them if you want to have different displays on your two monitors. In this case, however, it caused a small hiccup. After saving my new Windows monitor properties, the stylus and the cursor got offset. As you can see, the mapping is way off now and I wasn't able to calibrate the tablet at this point. But fret not, because the solution was really simple, I kept my monitor properties as is, uninstalled and then reinstalled the tablet driver and then everything just worked perfectly again. Now let's take a short look at the driver. The driver is almost identical to the Vic driver I experienced 4 years ago, but also with a few new features and general more pleasing color scheme. The screen mapping looks a Bit funky though. I mean, I did go back and place my tablet screen to the right side of my other monitor in the properties, but it does look a little bit squished. It's just a cosmetical thing though, because the stylus is mapped correctly. So the very first thing you should always do is to calibrate your tablet. Your cursor is probably already nicely calibrated, but recalibrating the tablet while the stylus is in your hand, the way that you grip it and hold the stylus, will make it more natural for you specifically. Then I turned on Microsoft Ink, because why not, and then I went over to the pen tab. Here you'll find the sensitivity graph, so you can control the sensitivity of your pressure, and the two shortcuts on your stylus. Under the function tab, you'll find the shortcuts for your express keys. There are six express keys, and they're all fully customizable. To add a new custom shortcut, click on the express key you want to change, and here you can pick from a variety of computer functions, from mouse clicks to keyboard keys and modifiers. Here are the shortcuts that I set up and used on this tablet. These are right now universal shortcuts, but you can also create app-specific shortcuts by adding specific apps to this bar up here. Pick your app from the list or search for it manually on your computer. On the stylus, I always add a shortcut to quickly change the brush size that I'm using. I found that this shortcut works for both Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop as default. Click on the stylus key that you want to use, Select Keyboard, clear the current shortcut, and then add the modifiers, Control and Alt from the drop-down menu. Confirm the changes, and now you should be able to control your brush size holding down this key and dragging the cursor in and out. It's super easy, and it really speeds up your workflow. My initial impression when I started drawing was surprisingly good. I also quickly did the jagged line test, where you use a physical ruler to draw some straight lines very slowly on the canvas. The diagonal line is the most tricky one, and if the tablet has any jitter, it will usually show up on this line. Compared to other tablets from various brands that I've tried throughout the years, I'll say that the VK 1200 passes the test and the jitter wasn't bad. I'll be showing you the full screen recording of the result right now so that you can decide for yourself. I also did a very quick color blend test, and I have nothing to add here, except that it was a nice and smooth experience to blend on this tablet. So now it's time for the big drawing demonstration, while I'm sharing my thoughts on the tablet. I'm going to draw my mischievous demon daughter Maka, but not in her usual cartoony self. I want to transform her into a semi-realistic stylized portrait. 
I thought it would be a fun challenge in itself, but I also want to demonstrate that even though the VK1200 is on the smaller end of pen display tablets, you can still create spectacular illustrations on it. While testing the tablet, I used it for two whole work days. During this time, I didn't experience the tablet getting too hot at any point. I had my brightness set to 80% and for the entire time I felt like the tablet had a comfortable temperature. This is one of the things I'm paying close attention to because tablets that get extremely hot can be very uncomfortable for me to use because it tires out my hand and my wrist, but this tablet was very comfortable all the way. I'm personally not able to work long term on a tablet of this size because I need to be able to use bigger arm movements. But that's another very personal preference and I wouldn't hold its size against this tablet because smaller tablets are perfect for so many artists and they're usually much more budget friendly too. Speaking of which, let's talk about the price of the VK1200. On the US Amazon, as of today when I'm recording this, the tablet is currently listed for $169.99, but there's currently also a $20 coupon right here that you can add so you can get it for less than $150. This might have to be the most affordable pen display tablet I have tried yet, even within its size category. In terms of value for the money, I think this is a very attractive price for a tablet of this size. And if you use the coupon Natty Axel, also listed in the description below, you can get an additional 5% off. The VK1200 has a full HD 9020 by 1080 display with a report rate of 290 points per second. As I mentioned, it is fully laminated, so there is no air gap between the drawing surface and the monitor itself. The stylus has 8192 pressure levels and supports up to 60 degrees tilt. These are all great standard specs in my opinion and exactly what I would be expecting from a tablet of this size and price. And you don't have to worry whether you're right or left handed because the display can be rotated inside the driver itself so you can simply turn the tablet around if you're left handed. On day one, after I've been working on this illustration and testing the tablet for most of the day, I decided to snooze my computer until the next morning. When I got back from my break, I encountered another little hiccup. When I woke my computer up, the tablet did not respond to the stylus anymore. I thought I could fix it by simply rebooting the computer, and now the stylus reacted, but instead the cursor was offset again. So here's how I fixed the issue super fast, it was surprisingly simple. I just used my computer mouse to turn off the Microsoft Ink option in the VIC driver and the stylus worked perfectly again. After this encounter, I did not experience any further issues during the two work days where I used the tablet for most of the time on those days. So as I mentioned, I did encounter a few hiccups, but I also got to be honest to mention that I've encountered far worse problems with high-end brand tablets. I would consider these issues I encountered minor and easily fixable and Vig was more than happy to help me resolve them. There were a few times when I tried to draw from a bit of a top angle where I felt like I lost some precision, but rotating my wrist around a bit usually resolved those issues. The cursor also had a bit of a hard time reaching the corners of the monitor if I tilted the stylus too much, but again if I rotated my hand around a bit, the cursor could easily reach the corners. It takes a little bit of getting used to these things, but once you do, you stop noticing it happening. In my opinion, these are minor things with pretty easy workarounds. All in all, I had a very pleasant drawing experience. I ended up using a mix of the express keys and my keyboard to use all of my usual shortcuts, and I was also generally happy with the display on the monitor itself. The colors were very vibrant, the interface appeared clear, and the surface of the monitor was really nice to draw on. The stylus did not feel awkward in any way, rather it is a really comfortable stylus, both in terms of grip but also drawing with it. So what's the conclusion? Well, despite the minor issues I mentioned, my impression is that the Vic Studio VK1200 is a great standard pen display tablet that delivers a comfortable and fun drawing experience at a very affordable price. You'll definitely be able to crank out a lot of amazing illustrations using this tablet. I feel like its performance and quality easily lifts up to similar tablets that are sold for higher prices, its size makes it super portable, it's quick to set up and the driver is fairly easy to navigate and to use. I think I would first and foremost recommend this tablet as a beginner's pen display tablet, especially because of the affordability. In my opinion, you'll get good value for your money here. 
If you want to further check out the Studio VK1200 for yourself, feel free to use the links in the description below. And remember, this review reflects my personal experience with and opinions on this tablet. Again, thanks a lot to Vic for letting me try and review the Studio VK1200. And of course, a huge thanks to you guys still watching at this point. You're the real MVPs. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I'll be back sooner than you know with a new video. So remember to subscribe and slam the ding dong to get notified of my uploads. Until next time, guys, stay creative. Bye!